we have studied <coughs> the markets where there is no role for the government and now what we look at is examples of government interference in the market now consider the following in every society you have rich and poor people and all of us need some basic things like food clothing basic medicines and so on and if we let everything <coughs> be determined by the market it's entirely possible that certain goods become unaffordable for a section of the society namely poor now if this happens the government sets in and sets what is called a price ceiling simply to make goods available to a certain section of the society another example of government interference and these are all serious issues is <clears throat> For example if you are looking at sellers and whatever they sell the market may not give him give them a price which will afford a decent level of living and in this case the government may step in and create what is called a price floor and so in this lesson what we'll look at the case of government interference when it is trying to help certain sections of the society what concepts the government uses and what are the consequences of that so as if first step let us look at the case of price ceiling now what is price ceiling the purpose of this is to make certain goods available to a class of consumers namely poor and some essential things like food clothing medicine and so on so in this case what happens is the government steps in and sets a price of a product and tells the sellers you can sell this product for a price lower than or equal to the one set by the government but they can never charge a price higher than the one set by the government and that is why it is called a price ceiling you cannot go above this price and if sellers do decide to sell it at a price higher than the one set by the government it is considered illegal and hence it is an offense namely an economic offense so some examples where you may find government stepping in is the case of food it could be for basic clothing it could be for basic medicines or it could be for rent now in the us the best example of price ceiling is rent control in certain urban cities the government steps in and believes living in an apartment is unaffordable to a class of people and the government steps in and sets a rent control which is essentially a price ceiling that is the owners of this apartment can charge a rent lower than or equal to the one set by the government but never a rent higher than the one set by the government let us use the diagram that we have used so many times in the past we have a demand curve which is downward sloping we have a supply curve which is upward sloping wherever these two intersect we have equilibrium and the price charged by the market is pe price at equilibrium and the quantity traded is qe at equilibrium now for some reason the government believes that the price charged by the market is too high for certain section of the society in such a case the government steps in and sets a price ceiling and this is what the government tells different participants in the market and that is they could charge a price lower than or equal to the one set by the government but never a price lower than this one <clears throat> so the government sets a price ceiling at this price and you could charge a price lower than or equal to the one set by the government but never a price higher than this one now at this price you will observe <coughs> that how much is quantity 
supplied it will be this much and let me just straighten this and let us write qs representing quantity supplied at this price ceiling what about quantity demanded you drop this point to the horizontal axis and you have determined quantity demanded and let us just write qd to represent quantity demanded so when the government sets a price ceiling demand is greater than supply or what we have is a shortage so just remember this whenever the government sets a price to protect interest of consumers the government for some reason believes that the price charged by the market is too high so the government steps in and sets a price ceiling and whenever we have a price ceiling a shortage will ensue now let us look at some consequences of price ceiling i've listed some important ones and what you can do is you can list some other words or think about some other ones the first thing we have realized is whenever we have a price ceiling a shortage will emerge and whenever there's a shortage and you do need this good what will happen is you may start going to the illegal market or the black market so now when you have a shortage you'll have an illegal market you can buy this product but outside the system in a way you'll do it illegally now to enforce a price ceiling that has been set by the government it is going to put more cops on the street now when the government puts more cops on the street they'll have to enforce price ceiling and it is entirely possible it's just in the realm of possibilities that we it is that we may be able to bribe the cops to get what we want and so the corruption increases this should be 5 so let me just change this to 5 and when the price is so low there's a disincentive for sellers to improve quality or and increase production so these are some consequences and important ones of price ceiling now let us look at another example of government interference and in this case the government believes that the pro product or service that sellers are selling the price afforded by the market or the price determined by the market will give them an income which is unaffordable to this class of sellers and one of the examples that you can relate to is the case of minimum wages if left to the market chances are people may not earn even minimum wages so the government steps in and sets a price floor of what is minimum wages and that means you can earn wages which are equal to or greater than the minimum wages but never wages lower than a minimum wages and you can find numerous examples of price floor in other fields as well for example in agriculture different governments around the world use it to protect the interests of farmers and in the case of us it is wheat and corn in the case of japan it is rice and in the case of european union it is sugar and similarly you'll find other examples of price floor so what is the definition of price floor the government sets a price for a product and assures the sellers a minimum price for their product this is also called minimum support price or minimum guaranteed price and now what we do is we look at the consequences of a price floor in terms of a diagram once again let us look at this basic diagram pe represents the price at equilibrium and for some reason the government believes that this price that is charged by the market is too low to generate a decent living for its sellers and in such a case the government steps in and sets a price floor and this 
price that has been set by the government has to be higher than the one charged by the market, which is price at equilibrium. And this is what the government says. If the price is higher than the price floor or equal to the price floor, there's no problem. But the government will prevent the prices to fall below the price floor. So let us just use this price floor set by the government to determine quantity demanded and quantity supplied. So for quantity demanded, we just take this price to the demand curve and bring it to the horizontal axis. And what we have determined is quantity demanded. In a similar way, we go to the supply curve, bring this point to the horizontal axis. And what we have determined is quantity supplied. And clearly here, quantity supplied is greater than quantity demanded. So when we have a price floor, the first consequence of this is we'll have a surplus in the market. And let us look at some other consequences of price floor. Now what has happened is the following. The market believes the sellers should sell less, but the government believes for whatever reason that the, the seller should receive a higher price for their product. And a consequence of that is that seller we get more and more of this product in the market so essentially what the government is doing is by setting a minimum support price or a price floor is giving an incentive to sellers to produce more is it really a good way to do it look at another consequence when the government sets a price higher than equilibrium obviously consumers pay a higher price for this product the most important question that comes to our mind when we are looking at price floor is suppose the market price in fact falls below the one set by the government and suppose we are looking at the case of wheat and in such a case to assure the farmers that minimum support price is effective the government has to step in and buy that surplus just imagine if you're looking at the field of wheat and government ends up buying 10 or 20 million tons of wheat what is government going to do with this amount of wheat? What it will do is it will try to sell it in a, another market because in your own country there is not enough demand at that particular price. Suppose in the world market there are no takers at the minimum support price. Now what government can do is either sell it at a loss, they, they receive a price lower than what they have paid their own farmers. And sometimes governments get into a situation where other countries just do not have the money to pay for wheat. And in such a case, what governments do, and most of the developed countries do this, is give a lot of food aid. One of the reasons for giving food aid is, of course, humanitarian, which is for good purposes. But the second reason for this is the government ends up with so much surplus of food that it doesn't know what to do. In only one case that I know, the Australian government, which had gotten a lot of surplus of wheat, they tried to give it for free. There were no takers in the world to take that wheat. And so what did the Australian government do? It just burnt that amount of wheat. Now, whatever it is, whatever the government does with the surplus, in any case, the government has to pay the farmers, so the government spending increases. Now, when government spending increases, how, how does the government pay for this increased spending? They just tax citizens of their own country. So citizens end up paying higher and higher taxes. So once again, these are some consequences of a price floor. And you should think about other consequences of a price floor. So what we have learned in this video is that the government can step in with good intentions but then it these actions undertaken by the government has a lot of bad consequences and so economists have devised or tried to come out of this and devise different policies which the government can use so you should think about all that and this is the last video on market and i hope you've enjoyed all the videos 
Thank you for your time.